Hi Ben, congrats on the win. Thanks. Carlos said yesterday that when it gets to a fifth set, he feels extremely confident and like he's going to win the match. You played three five set matches in a row this week. Do you have that same feeling going into a fifth set? Uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe a, a little bit the same. Uh, I definitely feel confident in how fit I am right now, um, how prepared I am to go to the distance, and uh, I know I'm gonna, you know, fight till the end out there. So I think that, yeah, my my confidence rises as I get deeper in the match. I just think that the more reps that I get uh, throughout the match, the better I play. So, yeah, I agree. Just uh, Ben, after the match, you uh, said to your dad, "We're back, big dog." So you want to talk a little bit about how that feels to have equaled your dad's achievement here? Yeah, pretty cool. Um, I think a lot more impressive that he was able to do it um, back in the day, you know, beating the number two player in the world as 50-something in the world. Um, but, uh, yeah, really, really happy that we get to kind of share this moment together again. Or not again, but together for the first time. And, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, looking forward to, to this next match. You know, we've been working really well together on the court and uh, I think that with this uh, the new coaching rule um, I think that the information that he's able to give me during the match he can keep me in the or help keep me in the right state of mind and uh, yeah I've, I've really enjoyed the kind of back and forth we've been able to have during the matches. Um, you currently tied with Giovanni Vipashi Berica for like the highest serve speed 140 miles per hour. How does it feel being able to achieve that here at Wimbledon? Especially that Giovanni is a big server as well. Yeah, I've really been focusing on trying not to hit big serves uh, during this tournament. You know, I think that three out of five sets, um, playing a lot of matches, you want to try to save your arm as much as possible. And um, my off-pace serves have been working really well. So I've been trying to mix it up and change it up. But I think it's important every once in a while to um, speed it up and show the guy that uh, I can hit the serve this big so you do have to uh, respect it and be ready for it um, so you know I know that I have that in my arsenal and know that I have bigger serves than that also <laughs> but uh, yeah I've kind of just been been trying to uh, mix things up while I'm out there. Howard? Hi Um how much when you were growing up did you ask your dad about his playing days? How much did he talk about them, maybe without being asked even? I mean, and, and, and now to this day, how much of a conversation is there between the two of you about things maybe he remembers or things he thinks could help you to know based on his playing days? Yeah, he's not really a guy who likes to talk about himself. Um, so. He didn't really volunteer that information when I was younger, and I was playing other sports and could care less about tennis and, you know, his playing days when I was younger. So uh, that's not something we really talked about. But within the last couple of years when uh, I came out here on tour and um, it's more like advice uh, given the experience that he had uh, rather than, you know, him just storytelling. Um, you talk about you and your dad having that kind of good rapport now. How long? I know he's been your coach for a very, very long time, but how long did it take to get to that place where you're not like, okay, stop talking now, or you yeah. are able to maybe tell him, like, I need to hear you less? And then when you said he helps your mindset, is he talking more strategy type things or just kind of cues that help you stay focused and calm? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit of both. Uh, sometimes, you know, he knows that I am doing the right thing. I just need to stay calm and be in the right state of, state of mind and sometimes he sees a tactical error that I make and we want to make a correction uh, out on the court so we can keep moving forward because three out of five sets you have to be able to make adjustments to win matches because there's there's too much time out there for the other guy to figure things out as well. Um, but I think that we started working really well together uh, when we got out here on tour. He was obviously my coach in college, and um, that was tough because, you know, there's there's 12, or sorry, 11 other guys on the team. Uh, I'm the coach's son, so he has to show that there's no favoritism, which I understand, but also, like, I'm running more sprints than everyone else when I do something wrong or show up late. 
Uh, I'm getting chewed out for more. If, if I lose a match, it's a bigger deal than everyone else, um, which I understand why I had to do that to, to keep the team in, in the right place. So things were much more difficult then than when we got out on tour. So after not working with him or traveling with him for eight months while he was still had the job at the university, um, and he came out on tour with me, I kind of really started to appreciate uh, everything that he brought to the table for me because I was missing it for that time. He doesn't make you run sprints anymore, does he? I mean, no, nah, that's kind of my uh, fitness coach's <laughs> job now. He stays out of that a little bit more. But, yeah, it was more like a, a punishment thing back then. Hey, Ben, congratulations. Uh, speaking of college, I was talking to Patrick Hassan after the match, no and those guys were out there living and dying with every point, yeah. top to bottom, and I was wondering what it means to you to have so many people from, like, that early in your journey, uh, you know, on this run with you, and also, like, how many people are here? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Patrick Hessen because, you know, he was uh, the team manager for the University of Florida team when I was, like, 14 years old. So sometimes he would, like, uh, my dad would have him like drive me to school after I practiced uh, in the morning at the university and he was just like one of those uh, cool guys that I always looked up to um, and the way that he's been cheering me on this week is the exact same as he was for the team when we were at Florida so he's one of those guys I'm like uh, I need to get him tickets every match and he needs to be as close to the court as possible because I just I feed off his energy uh, he kind of brings that uh, college atmosphere that I love and um, he keeps telling me, you know, uh, we're we're going to five. It doesn't matter. We're go we're gonna win in five. Win in five. And it's worked so far <laughs> this week. So uh, ho hopefully he was supposed to leave tomorrow, but hopefully he stays around a couple more days. You spoke a bit earlier about five sets. For some, it's a schedule problem. For some, it takes a big toll on the body. What do you appreciate most about five sets in tennis? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of things I appreciate about five sets. The amount of time that you're out there on the court, it's it's a physical test. You know, you have to be ready to go the distance, and you have to be fit and in shape. Um, there's also a lot of time for guys to make adjustments, so you can't really just blow a guy off the court in one way. Most of the time, you have to be able to figure things out um, and... and uh, Make make your own adjustments when when the guy makes changes and and, and starts figuring it out. Like today, Chapeau started doing a really good job in the fourth set of returning my serve, uh, finding a way to neutralize, and so I had to change it up. In the fifth set, I served almost every serve into the body and serve volleyed. Um, so I think that's the part that I like the the most about it: the game within the game. Hey Ben. Um, I think going out in one month was was it was a favor a lot. Now he's for senior in Wimbledon. How does that feel? Yeah, I think it's uh it's it's really cool for, for us to be able to share this moment um together. Something that, you know, I don't know if we thought that we'd be in this position at this point in our lives, but uh, really just uh, grateful for, for everything that's happened so far, and, and yeah, I'm going to continue to work and try to move forward. Yeah, I'm sorry, Matt. Uh, hey, Ben. I'm, sorry. I'm curious, coming into a tournament like this only your second time um, playing a grass season, was your goal, I just want to do better than I did last year? Um, what were your goals coming in, and did those change now that you've reached, now that you've if that even was a goal or if that was in your mind at all, yeah. does that change and now are you thinking, what? <laughs> yeah, I think that, you know, last year I didn't really start to feel good on the grass until I got to Wimbledon. So my goal this year was to play one extra week and hopefully feel a little better a little earlier. You know, that didn't end up happening. It kind of got to the same spot where I didn't feel great until I got here. It's, you know, something about playing here. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to keep moving forward or keep improving. Um, I think, you know, everyone tells me it's a surface that suits your game. and uh, But, you know, that's that's never reality until it happens. So I think that there's so many things that I have to continue to 
to work on on the surface and uh, it's tough because the season is so short and you want to try to figure out things really quick but you don't feel like you have any time so uh, what I'm most excited about still being here is you know this is four more matches at least that that I'm playing on grass um, 15 sets so I'm, I'm feeling more comfortable in each match and I think that that's that's all I need just a little bit of time.